Today we're taking a look at Remote Desktop Connection Manager. This application will let us manage our remote desktop connections. Let's say you're preparing for your next Microsoft Windows Server 2012 exam and you've got a small army of machines at your disposal to set up all the various labs. Well, you could open up a bunch of remote desktop uh, connection windows and minimize and maximize to jump between the different machines with the servers and the clients. Or you could use this application, which will allow you to, to quickly be able to jump through the various uh, remote desktop connections that you have. So from here on this website here, we can see that we got a big red download button here. And scrolling on down, we do have, you know, they give some details on the application and then for the system requirements. So to use this, you have to be on a Windows machine. Now it does call out Windows 7 and below with, you know, Windows Server 2008 R2. However, this is a Windows 10 uh, technical preview build. It's not listed, but this program still installs and runs just fine. So after clicking on the download button and installing, the application, which is just a next, next, continue type installation. We'll go ahead and get started. So we can go ahead and pull up our desktop connection manager. And as the application opens up, this is what we have. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to need to do is not create servers, but we need to create like a, uh, a profile or like a sandbox where we're going to uh, keep all of our uh, server connections. So we can just click on File and New. So we'll give this, this profile a name. We'll just call this um, Lab Machines. That works. All right, now, now that we have our little profile build going, you may be tempted just to quickly go ahead and begin adding servers. So, well, you can. But if you want to add any groups, so let's say you want to create some a group of, of servers and then a group of clients or maybe a group of domain machines and a group of workstation machines. If you want those groups, you'll have to create them first. So this program does not allow any mixing between uh, servers and groups. And so if you create the servers first, you can't create any groups. So let's go ahead and create a couple of groups. So we'll just go down here and click on add a group. And for this group name, we'll just call this one I always call this one a uh, domain. So this will be our domain machines. We'll click on add. And let's go ahead and click again. We'll add another group. And we'll call this one uh, work group. So those standalone machines we can stick in there. All right, so now we have our groups created. Now we can go ahead and uh, create those servers. So what we'll go ahead and do is we can highlight either domain or work group, whichever group that we want to have our servers nested in. And even if you want to change, let's say you have a, a you create a server in, in work group or a client or something, and you want to move them into the domain, you, you can. You can drag and drop these machines, or you can go through that server's property window and change it from there. So for this one, we'll go ahead and just click on domain, and we will click on add server. All right, so here we need to give it a server name. So for the server name, we can go ahead and just give this guy, a, we'll put in an IP address. So 10.1.230.201. And for the display name, so whatever name is going to be listed in the tree over there on the left. And so we'll call this guy ITProTV-DC2. All right, and so now we can enter in some logon credentials. Now, by default, all these options, all these tabs, will have a setting to inherit from the parent. Now, let's say that we're like our machine, so this laptop here, let's say that it is one of our lab machines and we're logged in with our uh, you know, domain admin account. Well, it will be real convenient to have this inherit from parent. So as we set all these machines up, it'll automatically pull in whatever credentials we're currently logged in as. So on this one here, for the uh, as an inherent from parent for the logon credentials, as you know, username Nathan and uh, a password domain. That this is the machine that I'm physically on, which those credentials will not work for this uh, IT Pro TV DC2. So we can uncheck inherit from parent, and we can enter in our own. So for this one here, we'll, we'll put a Nate 
and we'll put in the password for it. And then the domain for that machine is in lab two. All right, and from here, that is all we need to initially get connected. Now, if we were going through a, a terminal server uh, gateway, that let's say where our lab machines are outside of our little network, we can uncheck that, we can use this, and let's say it's, uh, you know, tsg.itpro.tv. And so, you know, if we're inside of our network here, then, you know, we just bypass it so we're not leaving our network and turning back around and coming back in, and we can enter in those credentials there but uh, we won't use any of that. So we'll just go ahead and say it inherit. All right, so we have our credentials and then we can just click on add. All right, so now we have one server. We can expand that down. So let's go ahead and add a couple in their work group. So again, we can click on add server and for server name, we'll give it an IP address of 10.1.230.200 and this guy's name is VM host. So he's got some some virtual machines on there so we can log into our uh, host there. And again, we'll go ahead and uncheck that box. Administrator, and then our password. All right, and the domain that he is in, well, he's a standalone machine, so we'll just give it that uh, his uh, machine name. Click on add. And again, let's go ahead and add one more. And so this guy we'll call this guy's at 10.1.230.238, and his name is ITProTV-SVR1. And again, in the logon credentials, we'll uncheck it. And this one here, Nate, in our password. And the domain that he is in, well, he's a standalone currently. So we'll put in his machine name. And again, for, you know, these particular machines, you know, we're not going, uh, you know, needing to go through a, a gateway server. Some of these other uh, settings in here, we can optimize our connection if we, if we needed to. Uh, display settings, we'll get into this here in a minute. We can change the thumbnail size. And the security settings, if we had any special parameters, we could change that there. And in our local resources, if we wanted to connect, let's say when we wanted to connect with a remote desktop, if we wanted our local drives to be attached, or if we want to share our printers, then those could be attached as well. It has this really neat uh, recording on here as well, so we can record the session. We don't need any of those, I'll just click that there. And then again, we will look at this stuff here in a minute, but the, uh, this area on the outside, the, um, it is called the, cl the client area. And over here on the other side is called the, the tree, the tree menu. So we'll go ahead and we'll look into that a little bit more on how we can uh, customize that for whatever it is that we're trying to do. So for this here, uh, we've go ahead and enter that stuff in and we'll click on add and we can expand this down. All right, so we have our, our machines connected and clicking on the various groups, so we can see just those machines in that group. So up here on our profile, we can click on that and we can see all of our machines. Click on just domain, we can see that one guy. And click on work group, we can see just the two machines in there. Now these here are live thumbnails. So you know, let's go ahead and fire up one of these machines. So we can right click and click on connect server. And it will reach out and then log on with those domains, or with the domains, with the log on credentials that we entered in onto that tab. Now, let's say we entered it in incorrectly, or we want to log on as somebody else. Well, we can change that information by selecting that server and right clicking and choosing properties. We can come back in there and we can edit those properties if we wanted to log on as somebody else. So in this case, let's go ahead and let's connect up to the server guy. And finally, we'll go ahead and connect to VM host. So, as we're logged into our, our lab machines, if for as many as we had on here, we can quickly jump back and forth on those lab machines. So we can jump through and uh, manage them uh, as opposed to having to uh, ma maximize and minimize all those different uh, desktop connection windows. So now we're connected, we can tweak this a little bit. So one thing that we can do is let's say, you know, this, this, uh, this tree window over here, I mean, it's, it's convenient. We can see what machines are connected and what machines are not connected. They have a little X on them. 
if we wanted to move that tree, let's say to the other side, right? We can do that here with view and server tree location, and we can change it to the other side. Pretty fancy. Let's go ahead and move it back. Now let's say we didn't even want that tree at all. We want to maximize our window. Well, we can come down to the visibility. And we can choose to auto hide. So now that tree is gone. By moving our mouse over to the left or to the right, whichever where we had the tree, then it will pop out and we can jump between machines. Now, if we didn't want to use the tree at all, we can use the remote desktops tab. We can browse into our little profile and then we can go to our different groups and select the machine in there. So we don't technically need that tree at all. But you know, I am a fan of the tree. So we'll go ahead and bring it back. Bring it back there. All right. So a few more options that we can do to kind of tweak our experience of managing our, uh, our machines here. In the tools menu, we can drop down with options. And so we have some options here on, on the tree and how it can sort things. They have these virtual groups to where we can show just those machines that are connected and which ones need to be reconnected. But the client area, so here in, in server manager, this area here, this window is the client area. We can go ahead and, and change that. Now, right now it's set as a, a custom size. So depending on what, uh, what resolution our, our host machine, right? So whatever we're running this application from, depending on that, the client size will dynamically adjust to whatever the size of this window is. If we wanted to fix the size of this window for whatever reason, that we can set this option here. If we want it to be 1440 by 900, let's say we're working on a, uh, you know, a, a large screen, a 1080 by, um, you know, yeah, 1920 by 1080. And if we set it for 1440 by 900, well, that client area would just be like windowed with gray surrounding it and whatnot. You know, I'd, I suppose if you need to set it, you can do that here. Now we have this option here about thumbnail size. So let's go ahead and, and check that out. So we'll go and click on cancel. So now that these machines are, are up and running, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. But we can click on our profile name up here to get a, a tile view of all of our machines. And if we want to just, you know, certain groups, we can click on the group name and see just those within the group. Now, what's really cool about, uh, about this tile view up here is that these are our live tiles. So if we wanted to click something within there, we, you know, we can change it. Well, that's pretty cool, but I mean, that is really small. Well, we can change that. So by going up to tools and options and in the client area, all right, we can actually, you know what, that, uh, that was for a later example. All right, so what we can do is we can, uh, we can click on our server name and go down to properties. And then in properties in our display settings, the thumbnail scale. So we can uncheck inherit from parent and we can adjust this number. So let's go to, to three. We can click on okay. And then clicking on lab machines again. Now we can see that that window is much larger. So now we can kind of click through on this machine without having to jump to it. It's about, you know, if, if we didn't have to read any type of dialog boxes, because it's still pretty small. Now, this machine here, this uh, IT Pro TV DC2, now this is set up as a widescreen format. And here on this little thumbnail, it, it, it is kind of squished. So it doesn't, the aspect ratio isn't quite there. Well, we can change that. So by going into tools and options, then in the client area, on the pixels, we can click on this guy here and we can change its aspect ratio back to a 16 by nine and click on okay and okay again. And so now it has adjusted the thumbnail size to the correct aspect ratio. So now it looks a little bit better to look at. All right, so another thing that we can do in this uh, remote desktop connection manager is let's say that we wanted to, to uh, drag this virtual machine or this uh, you know, desktop connection to another monitor. Let's say our host machine, we've got a whole series of monitors all set up. We want to, we want to utilize it. Well, we can undock this machine outside of this window. And to do that, we can right click on our machine name and we can choose to undock. And so now we have a window where we can drag this guy off to it another monitor perhaps and, and uh, maximize it. Now, if we wanted to return this guy 
into the window. Up there at the very top, we do have the file button. We can drop this guy down and choose dock. So that's all nice and everything, but what about our, our keyboard commands, right? So if I, if I push on the, the, my start button here, it brings up the start menu. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, but I, I want focus in here, you know, in my, in my uh, virtual machine. Well, you know, we, we can't quite do that, but we can if we choose to go full screen. So by right clicking on our machine and choosing full screen, now our start button works. And we can go ahead and use all of our keyboard shortcuts to manage this machine. And if we wanted to return, we just go ahead and minimize that window and it restores it back down. So those are the options. Those are the features and things that we can do with Remote Desktop Connection Manager to manage all of our virtual machines or our physical machines if, if we go that route by setting up a lab. So the next time when you set out to study for that next exam and you've got a whole army of machines or you have to oversee a bunch of machines and need to quickly jump around between the different ones without having to minimize and maximize a bunch of console windows, Remote Desktop Connection Manager is the tool for you.